You know, there's no shortage of bad news if you watch two minutes of TV, you feel overwhelmed. And it's important to stay in tune with the news. I'm not saying that we shouldn't, but we need to find a balance, I think. And uh, one of the lines in this song really strikes me on a deep level. It says that um, it is time now, and what a great time to be alive. What a great time to be alive. That is a magnetic call to me to look on the positive and to you know, do what we can do to make a difference. And that's why we're here this morning together. And now, I promised Barb that I'd have a slide <laughs> for the President's welcome. Barbara Moffat became the uh, president of the board just before COVID hit. And uh, she's been a, a true visionary leadership leader holding on to us and helping guide us through you know, all the ups and downs that we've been through in the past couple of years. And so, Barb, thank you so much. You might need to turn it on. Okay. I was asked to do a little bit about, and it is a little bit, because as I say, my phone died, and the information I was going to use was on the phone. <laughs> But uh, this fellowship started in March of 1990 when a little ad appeared in the bulletin asking for people who were interested in a humanistic or uh, community-oriented type gathering. And somewhere along in there, they wound up with 20 people at the first meeting. And it has grown since then. It's gone up in number, it's gone down in number, but we're still growing. And I find that amazingly wonderful. Our first meetings, I was not here for these first meetings, but this is what I'm told, were held in people's homes. Uh, from there, we sort of moved into some different homes of our own. One was at the Tryon Youth Center. We were out there for a number of years. And then we moved, to, I can't even remember the name of the place, the little yellow place farther up, closer to town on the same road. Um, I, I can't remember the name of it. We were there for several years. Then we moved to the Log Cabin, which was the old vineyard restaurant and several other things in between right there in Tryon, by the IGA. And then COVID hit, and things changed up rapidly. Somehow, I think it was Kathy and Nick who informed us about this place possibly being available, came and talked to the uh, owner, and we are here happily. It felt like home. And it still feels like home, and it's becoming more so. We've had a number of ministers. Our first meetings were held with guest speakers. And then out at the Tryon Youth Center, we were able to obtain the services of Jean Rowe, a wonderful, wonderful UU minister, and her husband, Lackey, who Walked with the Selma Marchers. Wow. And then we had, I always have trouble with her name, Maureen Killorin. And she was with us for a while, but she was an interim type minister and, and had a limited time with us. Then I believe we had uh, Mac Barnhouse. I don't know if any of you remember her, yes. but she was fabulous. She's now in Not, Austin. She's now in Austin, Austin, Texas, a minister of a large church there. And it was not uncommon to see Meg with a deck of tarot cards. She was an excellent tarot reader. <laughs> <laughs> I loved her dearly. Uh, then we had Michael Carter. 
whom many of you do remember, who is now the minister at uh, Black Mountain. You may have seen his name or heard or seen him on television. I think it's the History Channel that runs the uh, series quite often on UFOs. He is an expert. <laughs> He's also a former Broadway actor and uh, any number of things. He's very, very talented. And we enjoyed him thoroughly. And, but then we got Ernie Mills, who many of you do know and remember well. He was, uh, he is an entertainer. He's noted for doing impersonations of Mark Twain. Absolutely fabulous. And then we had our own Lyndon Harris. And we're going to keep him. <laughs> and that brings us up to date. So welcome everyone, new, old, in between. Thank you, Barb. What a beautiful uh, recounting of the history of this fellowship. And John, were you a part of the early days of the fellowship? I was. There was a gentleman named Norm Newell who got a dozen of us together. Uh -huh. um, and I, um, I was looking forward to being an active participant, but yeah. a few months after we had the uh, group incorporated, I took a job as a church organist and uh, therefore was otherwise occupied. Right. Well, we're glad you came back. <laughs> One of the founders of the fellowship has uh, now come back to join us after retirement. And we're so happy you're here, and Sean. Okay. Thank you for that, Barb. That's so beautiful. You know, I, I'm a forgiveness teacher, uh, for those of you who don't uh, know me. And um, I was invited to do one of my forgiveness workshops for the uh, fellowship when the fellowship was meeting in that little yellow building over by the river. And I don't remember the name of that place either. It was a restaurant too also at some point. And after doing the workshop, one of the board members said, hey, could you cover a service next Sunday? I thought, sure. <laughs> and uh, I'm still covering services three years later. <laughs> so I feel right at home here. This fellowship has uh, welcomed Maria and myself with open arms and with an open heart. I'm so grateful for that. All right. I'd like to you uh, to turn to your neighbor and say, welcome. Make sure everyone feels welcome. This is a piece. <laughs> this is a piece written by Rachel Rott, uh, in R O T T, and uh, it's called "Welcome Home." I've adapted it. It's from the Unitarian Universalist Assembly's uh, web web page. Welcome, you questioners, seekers of truth with a capital T, pilgrims longing for sanctuary. Travelers needing harbor from the storm. Welcome those who are holding on by a thread. Determined breakers of the chains of loneliness and isolation. You pushed through your fear because something told you that you deserve to belong. Welcome home. Welcome those who braid ropes again and again. You've been there for our siblings who are just hanging on. You gave them a hand into community and told them they could rest here. Welcome. Welcome home. How do we make this tender place wider? How do we stretch into a bolder welcome, a radical generosity of the heart? Can we commit and recommit to being accountable to one another as voices for justice, voices for inclusion, when we break our agreements with one another, can we offer amends? Can we be humble and generous? There is grace enough here. There is in this place the possibility of healing, 
of repair, of making things right within ourselves, between us, and with the wider world. There in, is, in this place, possibility. Welcome home. Welcome home. So, uh, Bart gave us a wonderful survey of the history of this fellowship and gives me a great place to start. Uh, today we celebrate new friends joining us, and I say to you, welcome. Today we also celebrate the longtime members who have been with us for a while, and I say to you, thank you. Um, Unitarian Universalist communities across the country often use the words church and fellowship interchangeably. I was in conversation with the uh, Unitarian Church in Charleston this past week, trying to uh, uh, connect my daughter to them because she needs an industrial grade kitchen and they have a kitchen that needs to be upgraded to industrial grade so it might be a match made in heaven. Uh, hold some good energy for that if you will. But they go by Universalist Church. We go by fellowship. We started, we opted for the word fellowship from the start. So what is a fellowship? Who are the fellows? Especially those who are always so jolly. Seth Godin says that for 500 years a fellowship was understood Tolkien style to be a collection of humans engaged in mutual support. It's hard to imagine something more reassuring, challenging, and productive all at once. To be part of an organized fellowship is a responsibility and also a chance to leap forward. He continues, a few decades ago, our status and selection-based culture shifted a common meaning of the word to describe a sort of prize. You get picked for a fellowship, and maybe you even get some money, and you can definitely put it on your resume. And I'm always grateful myself when I was doing my graduate work in theology in New York to be uh, named a fellow of the Episcopal Church Foundation, which helped make ends meet while I was trying to survive in New York. So no complaint on that front for me. But missing too often in this modern individualized understanding is the original magic of community coming together and creating together our vision for our outreach for the world. The original magic of an egalitarian circle that is, uh, who, which conducts its business uh, democratically. The hierarchy, if there is one at all, is horizontal, it's not vertical. We're all in this together. That's the kind of fellowship we are. And that's the kind of fellowship we celebrate today. So, remembering that fellowship that began 30 years ago, uh, those humble beginnings have stayed the test of time and somehow has held on to become what we are today and who we are today. This fellowship is like a tributary flowing into a, a larger stream in the world. We're one fellowship, one community of Unitarian Universalists flowing into the larger stream of the Unitarian Universalist Assembly, which has about 200,000 members in the U.S. And there are approximately 4,000 uh, Unitarians in North Carolina. And our, our fellowship is a unique community here in uh, the South, in the Bible Belt, a community of people with open hearts, progressive values. Um, we're not committed to a set of doctrines or dogmas, but we're committed to the seven principles, which you'll, you'll see uh, very soon. We have a, uh, a little flyer for our newcomers, and you'll get those in a minute, but principles of democratic, uh, creative leadership, social justice outreach to the world, communities of compassion and kindness seeking to be that ever widening sphere of an ever deepening reconciliation in the world. When I look out and I see each one of you, I'm in awe as I know some of the journey that you've been on. Some of you are teachers, artists, public 
leaders, leaders of every imaginable kind, having served in amazing and creative and wonderful and heroic ways in the world. And as you continue that service in your own ways now, we want to celebrate that because your work in the world is a part of this fellowship, this fabric of this community we're weaving together. All of us, I think, have one thing in common, the same thing that compelled our forebears to start this community 30 years ago, and that is that we desire and long for community, community where we are together. One of the most profound and, and sadly stated books for me that came out in the early 2000s was a book by Robert Putnam, a sociologist at Harvard in the Saguaro uh, School. It's called Bowling Alone. And he observes through his sociological research that you can travel across the country and sometimes in bowling alleys, the place for the most communal sport you can imagine, where people play on teams and in leagues. You can see people bowling alone. And um, wow, that's the danger of this highly individualized community that we live in now. And that's the um, issue that we seek to address. It's not bowling alone, it's bowling together. And we want this fellowship to be an experience like that. Uh, for you and for me. We want it to be a place where everybody knows your name and you feel a part of what's going on because you are. A place where great things happen because you help make it happen. Creative and insightful opportunities appear because you bring it to our attention and we share it together. That's the kind of fellowship we seek to create here. And we don't have a person to spare. We need you all. Uh, all of us stepping up, doing our part to make a difference in the world. This fellowship is a community dedicated to a free and open quest for truth. We're not afraid of truth. There's this uh, beautiful uh, motto of Virginia Theological Seminary in, in, outside of Washington, D.C. and Alexandria. And their motto for the I guess they probably still have it, but it's this, to seek the truth, come from where it will, cost what it may. We're not afraid of science or the truth. We see that as a way to move forward. We learn from it. And through those processes and through those pursuits, we learn so much about how we can become better human beings and better communities. We're committed. We're on a journey together, like a mighty river flowing to the sea. We each may step in at different points, but we're all traveling together. So where are we headed? What's our goal? Only you can tell us that. One of the early teachings I did when I came on board uh, covering Sunday services was a service that I entitled uh, Becoming the Beloved Community. And I did a uh, kind of a sort of background study of Martin Luther King's understanding of beloved community and the different trajectories leading, uh, coming out from that. And we hold that up as many Unitarian fellowships, in fact, as many Christian churches hold up as the model or who we're becoming, or who we want to become, a beloved community where there are no outcasts, where no one is otherized, where all people are free and empowered to participate and to lead together. We do it together. And now I want to um, say a word about our new members joining today. And uh, if, if you're visiting, we have, we have more of these services coming up and you'll have your opportunity as well. Uh, as you'll see, it's a very low-key approach to being a community. Uh, we hold each other accountable just to be good human beings and to find creative ways, little ways sometimes, 
to uh, participate in a larger vision than just ourselves. You know, we worked hard to provide uh, support money for the Feed a Kid program in the summer uh, here in this area in Polk County. We've done uh, support for Afghan refugees. We've, you know, we've done a lot of really creative stuff and looking forward to doing more. And that's one of the real desires that the board, the current board has, is to grow in our outreach participation in the healing of the world. And uh, we are not totally sure what that will look like moving forward. We have some ideas, but we invite your ideas and your energy, your charisma, your passion to be uh, leaders with us in this community that we're developing. And we are together, working together, we are on our way. So at this time, uh, I'm going to invite all of you who are here as uh, new members uh, to join in today. We have a, a, the only ritual we really have is you get to sign the membership book, which has been missing for two years. And guess what? It suddenly reappeared this morning. Gretchen found it. Thank you, Gretchen. <laughs> we had an alternative book for you to sign, but now we have at least the one we've used for a number of years. I, I wouldn't say it's the original, but uh, we have that book. And so, um, Becky, would you mind coming forward and uh, uh, helping us with this? And the book, where is the book? Is it, oh, it's over here. I thought people were going to find it later, but I can do it now. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So I, I invite you, if you're uh, joining us today, to, to stand, and, and uh, we have a we have a, a couple of uh, yeah, I guess pens in their bags, so it's COVID friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we have uh, flyers, and so here's the thing: we thought it was so cool that we have. Uh, so many new members that we do something really special and, and Becky and the board have put their heads together and they've come up with a gift bag of goodies uh, for our new members and uh, I don't want to give it away but we also have something for our regular members too. <laughs> yeah, so all we're all special today. Okay? So you want to come up here or should I take them your bag? Well, uh, let's do our let's do our new members covenant. So you can remain seated. Let's just say it together. Today we welcome into our community these new members who have chosen to make a commitment to this congregation by signing our membership book. New members, we're glad to have you here with us, and that you have chosen this community of fellow seekers to travel with you on your life journeys. Will you accept the gifts of this fellowship, discovery, and service? And will you offer us your unique presence and gifts? Will you add your name to the long history of Unitarian Universalist women and men who spread hope with our living faith? Will you engage with us as we seek to create a community and a world dedicated to love and justice? And all of our new members are invited to say, We will. We will. Excellent. And now I'm going to ask the old timers, uh, congregation, will you welcome these new members with the warmth and comfort of your fellowship? Will you seek to add your strengths and talents to the new gifts they bring to us? Will you share our triumphs and our struggles as our community grows and changes? And we say together, we, we will. will. Awesome. Let us say together again the covenant of this church the promise that we make each week to ourselves and to each other, which holds our community together with common purpose and common love in the midst of our beautiful diversity of belief. And I'm going to change the slide. And we'll all say together, and it's hard to read, I apologize for that. When I was doing the slides on my computer in the darkness of my, my study, it really looked bright on the screen, but here it's not as readable, but hopefully you can read it. Love is the spirit of this church, and service its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek truth in love, and to help one another. Okay. 
Bravo. And uh, so maybe one at a time, if you'd like to come up and, and sign the guest book, and uh, and then we have private uh, gifts for you. So where's our our book? Okay. Okay. Becky, Becky's our MC. So who wants to come forward first? Ellen's coming. Okay. Everybody good. Has a pen in their bag. There are pens in your bag. And as, as we're doing this, I have another song for you, and it's another favorite of mine. It's called We're Building a New Way, and it's got a little jazz going on in it, so I like it so much, so I'm going to play that. Can I just put my name down? Just yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and everybody, the new members all got name tags, I think. Could you say your yeah. name for us? Oh, yeah, say your name for us. This is Beth Kinsler. Yeah, 
Uh, David Cedrone is the owner, and he's been so kind to us. Uh, he's a real partner in crime and, and doing this, and we're just so thrilled to be here. You know, I wasn't that excited to come into a church to uh, do our fellowship at first, so I was opting for the, other, the, the, the depot. But the acoustics weren't so great, and it just didn't work. And this really works. I mean, it's homey, and it's eclectic, and it's whimsical, which is perfect. And uh, it just so happened that we were able to do this projection, which has, I think, added a lot to our services, too. So we're building a new way. We're in a new time. We have uh, new members, and we're growing in our outreach in the community. Uh, if you have ideas about projects or how we might be of service, bring that to the board. In fact, some of the new folks might even want to be on the board, and we would welcome that. Our board elections are in June and July, so... All right, um, let's say together. We extinguish the flame of this chalice. Let us follow the light of truth until we meet again. And now let us have a celebration, and I'll play the music. Thank you, Nick.